Fareed Zakaria, as much as I love you, you can also be part of the problem, like this interview with Jon Stewart. You look at it and say, now this whole thing is commoditized? You, you or Well, it was, listen, I, it was commoditized. It, you know, I wasn't doing it uh, out of gracious altruism. I mean, we were selling Budweiser. Uh, <laughs> it's always been commoditized. It was. We're going to have to back out. But Jon Stewart answers the question, honestly, he's paid to do comedy, to sell beer commercials. So kudos to him. But for Reed, on, on the other hand, let's rewind the tape a bit. In many ways, you, at least for me, you de created or defined American political satire. How has that changed? I mean, it feels to me like the, the, the stuff you did, mm -hmm. you know, the, the showing the video and then commenting, it's become, it, it's, everybody does it. Every one of the fun things about life is watching super smart people say the most inane things you could possibly imagine. So Fareed, first of all, says, oh, you know, John Stewart created political, like, satire? Like, are you joking? And he says, okay, oh, he defines it. He can even hear in his head, he's like, oh, I have to say it defined it. And this is where he says, you know, it's clipped off, where he says it's been commoditized. No, it has not been commoditized. It was always a commodity. There's always been political satire for as long as human history. Like, it's just the stupidest possible question. And Jon Stewart, again, answers it honestly like, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, political commentary, I'm paid to do it and to sell Budweiser commercials. The real question Fareed should have asked is how has political commentary changed since you were doing it on The Daily Show? So let's back up and remember, okay, so news was becoming more and more uh, uh, partisan and politicized. And so Jon Stewart went on Crossfire 20 years ago to Tucker Carlson and basically said, hey, you know, how about some balance here? Stop making it all about one political party and the other. Just let's have an honest discussion. You guys are supposed to talk to the politicians about real issues. You're not supposed to make everything a political dogfight or a cat fight or a food fight or whatever you want to call it, right? I mean, that was the problem. And so people were like, oh, wait, if the comedian at Comedy Central, Jon Stewart, is the one talking about this problem, then that's, that's we got to respect, that's, that's fun. Finally, somebody, he's not the one that's supposed to be talking about it. People like Farid are supposed to be talking about it. But he's talking about it. So in that way, yes, he did sort of redefine, he changed political commentary. But what's happened since then is instead of the news pushing out all this partisan hackery, that's all it does now. And that's all the comedy does now. That's all the Daily Show does now. All the issues, all the things that Jon Stewart talks about in this interview, he never mentions Republicans or Democrats. He never, even in the smallest way, insinuates, like, oh, Republicans are bad or Democrats are bad. Now, Fareed will ask him about, you know, Republicans, and, and Jon Stewart says what a reasonable answer is, like, hey, you know, the you know, ones that are reasonable, yeah, I, I can do, I can work with them. With, there's no problem. So Jon Stewart, when he's in these interviews, is never a partisan hack. But he's a partisan hack on The Daily Show. And the question is, why? That's what's changed. Political commentary in the country has not become commoditized. He didn't invent it. There has always been political commentary. Go to the library. Go on the Internet and look up in, uh, you know, political cartoons. It's been around for centuries, centuries. Like the, I think what was it was the British magazine Punch or whatever. I mean, come on. It's been commoditized? He, like John Stewart invented it? For Reed, how stupid of a question can you possibly ask? It just really gets me going. How can a guy of your smartness say that John Stewart, even suggest that John Stewart invented political satire and now what he was doing has been commoditized? Are you paying attention? It, was, it's not, it hasn't commoditized it. What's happened is it's been politically weaponized. That's always about the Democrats or the Republicans. That's the problem. And here you are in this interview, basically sending the interview into nowhere's land. I think even John Stewart was a little frustrated. Like, you know, where are you going with this? <laughs> anyway, well, I got some good steam there. 
he could become president anyway. Farid, you, it's, we either have the rule of law or we have no rule of law. The rule of law does not take into account if that might make you a martyr to somebody. I'd much rather have the conversation be, what is the law? What exactly are we saying that, that he did? His you know, this is very interesting because this is sort of um, a Stewart's uh, speech to Tucker Carlson 20 years ago, but in a very you know nice and friendly way with Fareed Zakaria, who I'm sure he likes. And again, Fareed Zakaria is normally great, but Stewart is calling him out here, and uh, it's subtle and interesting, in my opinion. So Fareed has basically said, hey, listen, you know, the problem with Trump is if we – let him become president having broken these laws, that's bad, right? I mean, if he fomented an insurrection and he cheated on his taxes and whatever and he gets in, that's bad. On the other hand, if we put him in jail um, and then he people look at him as a martyr and he gets elected president, that's bad too. We don't want to make him a president by making him a martyr. What should we, what should we do? And it's a – Again, it's sort of like a, it's a question that the, the media, that Fareed is making up. And so John Stewart is basically saying, hey, listen, why are you making up that issue, the issue of whether to uh, put, you know, convict Trump and make him a martyr or not make him a martyr? Why, why is that the question here? Because, again, Fareed is making up this question. The news, CNN is making up this question. I, for one... I'm not going around say, asking, well, should we make him a martyr or not make him a martyr? That's not my narrative. My question is John Stewart's question. Did or did he not break the law? Trump, what is the law? And, you know, if he broke the law, yeah, he should go to jail. We, the, the martyr issue is a secondary issue. It has nothing to do with anything. We don't take people to court and say, oh, well, we're not going to convict him because I'll make him a martyr, do we? I mean, it's a secondary thing. Why are we talking about a secondary issue? So John Stewart is basically pushing back in this interview, again, which I like, but Fareed is not really, he doesn't, um, he doesn't really take him on. He doesn't really talk about it. And again, so we're sort of back to where we started 20 years ago, where the news is basically making up narratives that are unimportant to any educated person that I think even privately for Reed would say, yes, the martyr issue is not an issue. The issue is, did or did not Trump break the law? And if he did, why isn't he already in jail? That's the question. So, you know, but then this begs the next question for me is, which for Reed should have asked, is this is the issue I, I would think that Jon Stewart would like to do satire on The Daily Show. He would like to do satire like, Oh, look, everybody's talking about whether he's a martyr or not. Hey, what about the question of whether he's guilty? <laughs> you know, What about the question of why all the people around him are going, going to jail and he's not? Like, I don't get it. Like, if he's the mastermind that did the crime, why isn't he in jail? Why are we talking about him as some sort of religious martyr or something like that, right? That's what Jon Stewart, the satire, I believe Jon Stewart would like to do on The Daily Show, but he can't. Why? I mean, I asked that question in other videos. Anyway, again, I thought this was very interesting that, uh, again, Fareed was sort of um, bringing up a news canard, a news question that wasn't a real question. And Jon Stewart was as nicely way as possible saying, like, why is that a question? It's moneyed interests. It's lobbyists. It's people who are weaponizing misinformation and disinformation. And all of those form this it's the most cloistered so you found it, you found you could deal with very conservative republicans of course b b b because as you know you should know john stewart uh basically advocates for the first responders during 9 11 because they breathed in a lot of this you know dust and whatever and they got sick and he also advocates for uh military personnel who worked around burn pits around the world and got sick from that too and so when John Stewart goes to Washington to advocate for this people, he doesn't go down there and say, oh, Mitch McConnell, you look like a, a turtle. He doesn't go to the Alabama senator and say, oh, your state is a bunch of low-life hicks. No. In, in, in a sense, in real life, John Stewart is a nonpartisan person. 
he definitely leans more towards like liberal democratic values, let's just say. But he's not some like, you know, booster for the Democratic Party. And he's not some hater of the Republicans. He tries to be neutral in real life. So Zakaria is asking him, oh, so, you know, do you get along with those Republicans when you go to Washington? Now, think about that question. Why wouldn't he? Right. Why wouldn't he get along with Republicans down in Washington? Right. If he's advocating for first responders, why would anyone go down to the Senate or the Congress or any sort of political place and basically take sides? Because you're never going to get a deal done. Right. If you antagonize the other half. So, of course, he never would do that. So why is he saying, oh, is it hard to, to, to deal with Republicans? Well, anybody who knows anything about this, no, no, it's not going to be hard. Every, every, you already know the, his answers and be like, no, of course, you know, I, I'll talk to anybody. So what he's really saying is that, oh, but, you know, everybody knows you from The Daily Show. So how would you get along with Republicans? Zakari is saying what I am saying. He's making the argument that I'm making that people think us crazy town, right? Like The Daily Show is a partisan hack against the Republicans. It tries to reach an audience to make them feel good that the Republicans are evil. So you watch The Daily Show and you're like, oh, yeah, the problem with the world is the Republicans. And that's what Jon Stewart does. He does jokes against the Republicans. So Zakari is saying, oh, you know, you do all these jokes about the Republicans. You know, obviously you hate the Republicans. So what do you do when you go down there? I mean, can you get along with them? Because you obviously hate them. But he doesn't hate them. So and then it gets back to the question. If this is the real John Stewart, and it is, where he is not partisan, why can't he do nonpartisan satire on The Daily Show? That's the question. The question, can you get along with Republicans down on Capitol Hill, is a stupid question for an educated person like, like Fareed Zakaria to ask. It's his second turd on this show. That's not the question. The question is, why can't you do the satire on the show that advocates for 9-11 responders and burn pit victims in a nonpartisan way so you might get the legislation you want? Why can't you do that satire on The Daily Show? All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I don't want you to think that I don't like Jon Stewart or Fareed Zakaria. I, it's not that at all. My... my, my if I, I want to make the point that what I'm trying to show is that there are large forces around both of them, around the news, around comedy, that prevents them from doing the educated, reasonable things that they would like to do. And they have trouble basically talking about it because they're paid not to talk about it. And so, but at least they, I feel that they have to at least recognize it a little bit more. They need to push a little bit more than just saying, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I do it to like sell beer commercials. OK, Fareed, too, needs to basically come clean a little bit more. He's paid good money not to ask these intelligent questions. All right. Until next time.